Hey, Olive, Arlo, and Frank. Grandpa coming to you from Guana Preserve, South End by the kayak rentals. Beautiful day here. I don't see any place outside that I can do this video and be left in peace. So I'm coming to you from the Vatican once again. Getting ready to, to go stand up paddle boarding with my fairly new used inflatable sup. And I kind of suck at the sup so far. Took a lesson once and I got up all right and everything, but I, I have trouble getting up <laughs> when I'm out there on my own. So I figure I'd go out there and be on my own and I'll probably get wet and cold again. Just like I did when I went out last week. When you were there, Arlo, up in Georgia. I was out there, your, your dad was in a kayak and I was on my sup. I sup. Today I want to talk to you about six degrees of separation. Now you're going to say, Grandpa, what is that? It's a theory that between every human being on the planet that you can use six social connections and and you can connect them all so me and some wheat farmer out on the plains of china or russia we can be connected between six social connections and i don't know how true that is i tend to think it's bunk but but it's an interesting theory. But I have found out that there are a lot of coincidences that you run into people who are um, from the same places as you and everything. And recently this happened. I was camping in, in mid-state Florida with my friend Larry Phillips. I forget the campground. But we were just there for a night. We were cooking hot dogs over the fire. This guy came up and he said, do you want some um, some firewood? And we said, sure. The guy gave us the firewood and he said, yeah, we don't need it because we're heading back to, to New Jersey first thing in the morning. So I said, where in New Jersey? And, and he told me the place. And I said, well, yeah, my parents used to have a house in Stone Harbor. And he said, well, I know Stone Harbor. I used to live in Cape May Courthouse. People getting too close to the van. You know, grandmother and I lived in Cape May Courthouse. And so we, we figured out that where this guy lived was close to a place that our neighbor in Miami, when we lived there for nine years, that she had had a restaurant right there on the corner on Main Street near Hand Avenue. And this guy lived right near there and he knew the restaurant and everything. And I said, oh, you know, it's really funny that, you know, my wife knew this lady and she owned that restaurant. And it turns out that not only did we live next door to each other in Florida and live near each other in Cape May Courthouse, but my wife, wife grew up in a neighborhood in Philadelphia where this lady lived and I said, are you familiar with Overbrook? Or he said, oh, oh, I know Philadelphia. I used to live there. I said, are you familiar with Overbrook? And he said, well, yeah, kind of. But but I live another place. I lived in Oxford Circle. So I told the story about the fact that, uh, that, that your grandmother and this lady were both convinced that Overbrook Pizza had better pizza than any place in the universe. They had both been to Rome and Venice. 
And both of them said that this overbooked pizza is better. And I've had overbooked pizza. It's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's the best in the world, but it's pretty good. This guy didn't know overbooked pizza. But I said, you know, it's funny that you said you, li you lived at Oxford Circle. Because I used to live very close to Oxford Circle. I had a girlfriend, and we lived in Castor Gardens. We lived on Hellerman Street. And he said, oh, I know where that is. And then we moved over to Folkrod Street in Frankfurt, and that's on the other side of Oxford Circle. So crossing the Roosevelt Boulevard, U.S. Route 1. And he went, oh, I, I know exactly where you're talking about. And so I said to Larry, Larry, do you remember the day that we were finishing up, having lunch, after um, we ran the Broad Street Run in Philadelphia? It's a 10-mile race that starts at the very top of Broad Street, and it ends down at the, at the Naval Shipyard. And Larry and I ran it. Judy ran it. A friend of ours named Johnny Santiago came to take pictures because he was into photography. And this other guy, Frank DiDonato, was there too. He just came to, you know, hang out with us. And we all got together. We bought hoagies and we all got together and went back to the house on Folk Rod Street. And we were sitting there. And Frank DiDonato, the nudist that we used to give, like, he was the nicest man in the world. A little bit strange, and one thing that he did is he, he went to these nudist parties. He, he was on a um, cruise around Manhattan with all naked people. He used to go to a place called Sandy Hook, and, and we, we would just give him a hard time about this all the time. And I said, do you remember the story about, um, I think it was called the Oxford Circle Bowling Alley. And he said, yeah, kind of, it rings a bell, yeah. Something about the kids and the bowling alley. Well, it turned out that this bowling alley, Oxford Lanes, I think maybe, was a block or two from where this guy lived. So he said, yeah, I'd go past there every day. When we moved from Castor Gardens to Frankfurt, some of the kids went to the new school and some of the kids finished up at the old school and then we're gonna start in the new neighborhood and when the school went back in the, in the fall. So there were like maybe three kids that were walking together to Carnell School up by the old house. And they walked across at Oxford Circle, across the Roosevelt Boulevard, which is a giant, it's like an eight lane highway street kind of thing, going right up the gut of Philadelphia. And so Frank DiDonato was sitting there and he said, oh, I see on this map that we're near the Oxford Lanes, the bowling alley. And we went, yeah, it's not that far from here. And he said, I went bowling there a couple of weeks ago. And this guy was not athletic at all. I mean, he just didn't seem like the kind of guy that would be a nudist out there. I mean, he didn't have the body for it, let's put it that way. And we're like, Frank, we didn't know that you were a bowler. And he said, well, no, no, we're, but it was my group that went there. It's like your group. Oh, you can go naked bowling? And he said, yep, nothing but the shoes. So we're laughing our butts off about Frank DiDonato being naked, bowling and all this stuff. And we didn't realize that the kids were sitting there playing video games and they had stopped playing and they were listening. We found out a couple weeks later that 
they went five blocks out of their way on the way to and from school every day because they were afraid that they were going to see Mr. DiDonato naked in the, in the bowling alley. <laughs> and we asked him, we said, like, oh, do they have curtains? He said, oh, there's these shades. And they pull them down and they lock the door so you can't, like, walk in on us. And we take over the whole bowling alley. And it just, um, and, I, and I said to the guy at the campground, I would never in my wildest imagination tell this story to a, to a complete stranger. But because of the six degrees of separation factor, I had to tell you about Mr. DiDonato and, and the Oxford bowling lanes. So um, I still think six degrees of separation is bunk. Talk to people. You never know how close you are to a complete stranger when you run into them. Peace out, guys. I got cold drinks if you want them. Yeah, I don't want a cold drink.